Hello, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hope. And this is our weekly message. And our message today is entitled, Are We There Yet? But before we get into the message, I just want to say that today is a sad day. We, we have one less underground church with us. But just a few days ago, the whole underground church was martyred for the name of Jesus. They had gathered together to, for deep prayer. They were on the phone with, with um, the, their U.S. contact. They could hear gunshots, screaming, and then silence. They were in deep, deep prayer, deep anguish for their home country, Afghanistan. Even the children had made a strong commitment. They said they will not deny the name of Jesus. And today, the whole church, the whole underground church has been martyred. You know, we won't hear that sort of stuff on CNN. We won't hear it on MSNBC. But this is the kind of stuff that's going on right now today in Afghanistan. While we live here free, we're, we're able, at least for a little while longer, we're still able to gather. We're still able to call in the name of Jesus. Though we can see that that is quickly dwindling. There will come a time when we will no longer be able to call on the name of Jesus in freedom. I suggest we get our act together. I suggest we start calling on the name of Jesus. Our message today is entitled, Are We There Yet? I would like you to turn with me, please, to Revelation chapter 9, verse 1 through 6. And the fifth angel blew his trumpet, and I saw a star falling from heaven to earth. And he was given the key to the shaft of the bottomless pit. He opened the shaft of the bottomless pit, and from the shaft rose smoke like the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened with the smoke from the shaft. Then from the smoke came locusts on the earth. And they were given power like the power of scorpions of the earth. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any green plant or any tree. But only those people who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They are allowed to torment them for five months, but not to kill them. And their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it stings someone. And in those days, people will seek death and will not find it. They will long to die, but death will flee from them. By this time, there's a whole lot that's going on and has already gone on. By now, many, many things have happened. For instance, four of the seven angels have already blown their trumpets. A third of earth was burned up. A third of the trees has already been burnt up. All the green grass has now been burnt up as well. Something like a great mountain burning with fire has been thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. A third of the living creatures in the sea have died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. The great star, Wormwood, blazing like a torch, has fallen from heaven and fell on the, the third of rivers and on springs of water and has killed many, many people because of the bitterness of the water. A third of the sun and a third of the moon were struck, and their light has now been darkened. 
Also, a third of the day has been kept from shining, and a third of the night as well. And now here we have a star falling to earth, having the key to the bottom, bottomless pit. And who is in the bottomless pit? We will get to that in just a bit. All of this seems futuristic. It seems so totally sci-fi. Like it could never, ever happen in our lifetime. But could it be happening right now? Could this be the beginning of birth pains? Right now, there's a facility in Geneva, Switzerland. It's located on a French-Swiss border by the name of, Sw of CERN. It lies at the foot of the Jura Mountains beneath peaceful farms and beautiful vineyards. I believe CERN will play a part of fulfilling end-time prophecies, namely the prophecy concerning Abaddon or Apollyon. Some suggest that the site where CERN is built was chosen because it was where a temple used to worship Apollyon was located. I have not found the evidence to prove that. CERN which stands for the European Organization for Nuclear Research, is a multinational organization, with Israel being the only non-European nation to be accepted as an observer mem member. Why is Israel the only European non-European member? Could it be because of their authority on scripture or their authority on prophecy? Physicists and engineers have built a seven-mile-long tunnel complex 575 feet beneath the Earth's surface to house their $9 billion large Hadron Collider. This LHC, as they refer to it, is used to accelerate particles to approximately the speed of light and then slam them into each other, creating what they call the conditions seconds after the Big Bang, or so the narrative goes. The Big Bang is what astronomers say caused the universe to come into existence. It all started at a single point that exploded and, ex and, and it expanded what we know now as the universe. But according to, to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We believe that God planned every little minute detail and spoke it into being. And everything he planned, everything he envisioned, every thought he had came into existence at that time when he said, let there be and there was. CERN's logo is a 666. At least it looks like a 666. But you judge. Located at the entrance is a big wheel. And in that big wheel is the Hindu god Shiva doing the dance of destruction. For those of you who might not know, Shiva is a part of the Hindu Trimorti which means three forms of God. It is their holy trinity, which includes Brahma, the source or the creator, Vishnu, the preserver, and Shiva, the destroyer. Interestingly enough, the book of Revelation mentions the destroyer, who will also play a big part in end times. Look with me, please, at Revelation chapter 9, verse 11. They have its king over them, the angel of the bottomless pit. His name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in Greek he's called Apollyon. Abaddon means the destroyer in Hebrew. Apollyon means destruction in Greek. Now, I want us to put these two, uh, uh, the, the scripture together with another scripture, 
Revelation chapter 17, verse 8. The beast that you saw was and is not and is about to rise from the bottomless pit and go to destruction. And the dwellers on earth whose name have not been written in the book of life from the foundation of the world will marvel to see the beast because it was and is not and is to come. They marveled to see this beast who was and who is not because he was on earth. But now he's chained up in the bottomless pit, waiting to be released by the star that falls from heaven. And who has the key to the bottomless pit? And he releases this, this Abaddon. And believe me, Abaddon will be released. And this is why they marvel. Because he was. Now he is not. But he will be again. So what are we told is the purpose of CERN? Well, in four words, recreate the Big Bang. Scientists at CERN hope that their, their experiments will uncover extra dimensions hidden in our universe. In other words, they're hoping to open up some type of doorway, through, though they, they call it a black hole. We would call it a portal. This is a report I read on newspunch.com, supposedly written by Dr. Edward Mantell, a physicist who was found dead in his office at CERN. This is the report. At a meeting held in Luxembourg, the heads of state of the newly formed European Union, along with the United States and China, were shown plans for the construction of a colossal machine that would enable the opening of a doorway that could, could be closed at our discretion. The door would be opened and the le energy levels would be measured to prove that CERN had accomplished its task and the door would be closed. Open, shut. Simple as that. End of quote. As I said, a baden is chained up in the bottomless pit. So for more on a baden, see our video, Who is a baden? The angel of the bottomless pit found under our end times tab. Now I believe a baden is locked away in the bottomless pit, awaiting the day of his release. People still worship him today. And they will worship him again. I also believe that, that CERN is knowingly or unknowingly working feverishly to find the right key to unlock the door and release the destroyer upon the face of the earth. He will wreak havoc on the earth and especially on God's people. But Jesus has made us a promise. He will never leave us nor will he forsake us. So when troubled times comes, Jesus will be near. Sometimes he delivers us through the storm. Sometimes he delivers us out of the storm. Either way, we put our trust, we put our hope, and we put our faith in him. And he will bring us safely to the other side. Let me continue reading this report. The government leaders threw endless funding at the family which is what the heads of departments are called at CERN. And the rest of CERN in the hopes of understanding what kind of power lay in another universe. Think of the possible endless source of energy, faster than light travel, weapon, weaponry that could obliterate enemies using laser. The possibilities for power were truly staggering. So the public was fed one narrative, understanding the universe, and the family and governments knew the truth. Most of the scientists at CERN were kept completely in the dark. After all, the collider would perform its function as normal and collide particles for eager funding hunters to capitalize on. But the far more nefarious purpose would only be tested in the presence of the family and a few select scientists. 
Obviously, the original family have all retired or died out. But there is a new, younger, more eager to prove themselves group now at the helm. And the consequences of this were and are dire. End of quote. This is exactly what I'm concerned about. The public is fed one thing by the news and by the social media and by all the other news media. While the real insiders are privy to what is really going on. You have seen it time and time again where insiders like Snowden and Google employees and Project Veritas, Veritas exposes things that were meant to remain secret, at least from us, the population at large. The report goes on to explain that they did a secret, untested, unsanctioned, never before attempted experiment because it was thought to be too dangerous to even try. But the head of CERN, Sandra O'Reilly, called the family together and authorized the, the experiment to be conducted. During the experiment, she disappeared, according to the report. My strong belief is, whether CERN scientists knows it or not, they are feverishly working on a project that would usher in the destroyer, Abaddon. He will be released from the bottomless pit when one of their portals finally opens the doorway for him to come out. So what is the bottom line? I believe that we live in a period where scripture is being fulfilled. Every day we see something, something new, something else is happening. And the end of days, I believe, are quickly coming upon us. They are here. What is my point? I'm saying we're living in the last days. And there is so much going on so quickly that we are not even aware of half of what's going on. So the question is, have you decided? Are we there yet? And if we are, are you ready? Do you know where you will spend eternity? Jesus is the only way to a blissful eternity. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through Him. You need to know who Jesus is so that Jesus can know who you are. So on that day, you will not hear, depart from me, I do not know who you are, but rather you will hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Now enter in. You need, if you have not already, you need to accept Jesus' free gift of salvation. He has lavished salvation upon us. So there's no excuse. All we have to do is to ask for it, and he will freely give it. Jesus is holding out his hands to us right now, today. He's saying, come. All ye who are weary, all you who are heavy laden, come and I will give you rest. Jesus has a time of rest for us. Will you come? Will you accept his free gift? I want to ask you again, are you ready to meet Jesus? Let me ask you th this question. Is your loved one's ready to meet Jesus. Can you and your loved ones say, no matter what, we will not deny Jesus. Just like those children did in Afghanistan and they paid the price for it. Can you say with all sincerity, no matter what, I will not deny Jesus. 
If you don't know who Jesus is, he's made it real easy. All you got to do is to ask. For everyone who asks, receives. Pray this prayer with me. Father, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my iniquities. Help me to live for you. Give me boldness and confidence. Open up my eyes that I may see. Give me strength to fight this spiritual battle. Give me strength that I might stand and say, no matter what, I will not deny you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying for me. Thank you for lavishing salvation upon me. I accept it now in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. What I would like for you to do is to get yourself a Bible. Buy a Bible. A Bible that you can understand. Get a highlighter. Highlight the promises. Highlight the, the, the scripture that's meaningful to you. And, and commit to memory those promises. Jesus will not deny his own promises. He will not go back on his own word. For he is indeed the word that became flesh. Find yourself a church, a Bible-believing church, not one of those progressive churches, but one of those Bible-believing churches who still believe in holiness, who still believe in righteousness, who still believes that, that the scripture says, Thus saith the Lord. There's a way that seems right unto man. But the end thereof is death. But the way of righteousness leads to life. So join that church. Be discipled in that church. And when Jesus comes back, he'll find you doing what it is you're supposed to be doing. And he'll take you to be with him forever and ever. Eternity is a long time. Make sure you're ready to meet your Lord and Savior, the judge of the whole world. I believe with all my heart the days are close at hand. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Kenny Yates. This is Hold to Hope. Be blessed and stay blessed.